as you say, Kay, d dementia is something that is in, it's in the headlines all the time. And, you know, women of our age, it's something that we're dealing with in terms of parents or grandparents. So it's something that's affected all of us in, in some way or, or another. But we look at it from the outside in. Now, Lindy, your, your mum had yeah, dementia. Yeah, my mum Rita had um, dementia. She died three years ago. Um, and when we first started noticing things, she just lost her partner. So we thought she was depressed. And then gradually we realised that she did have dementia. And uh, obviously it's really scary for us and it's really, really scary for her because she knew something was wrong but she didn't quite yeah. know, she couldn't remember a lot of things. She could... There's my mum, oh, there, there she is, Rita, that's with my sisters. Um, so it sort of crept up on her quite quickly and we'd be out and she'd go missing and and at home. Uh, also, like, she kept shopping. We'd, we'd take her to Sainsbury's to do a shop and she'd shop as if she still had a big family yeah. there. So, like, this character Maud mm -hmm. is always buying Did she have peaches. an awareness of what She just was knew something wasn't right, you know, like, yeah. and she was scared. You could see the fear in her eyes, mm. you know, like, she ended up in a Marie Curie hospital in um, Hampstead. And um, the other thing that she, she had quite a lot of accidents so she'd forget she wanted to go to the toilet so we always had to make sure she was near a loo um, and me and my sisters like spent obviously a lot of time there with her and the nurses were absolutely amazing but it is really scary because we'd get to the hospice and she'd recognize us as we walked in the door mm. me and my sisters and then mm. after that second she didn't have a clue who we were she was eating foods that she hated you know like she'd forgotten everything she was drinking tea she'd never drunk tea in her life mm. she'd forgotten she'd stopped smoking so she started smoking again she lit up in the ward one day the alarms all went off <laughs> and that <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a horrible but thing to see. But how did you see. feel reading the book? Because, obviously, for, for me, it was my grandmother who, yeah. who had dementia. I personally, I thought it was a beautifully written book. I thought it was really well observed and such a brilliant idea to look at dementia from the inside out through the eyes of someone with it. I personally got too upset and I couldn't carry on with no, it. I, I and that was it. my grandmother, so I just wondered yeah. how you no, felt. No, I read it, it and I, I really enjoyed reading it. And I think anyone that knows anyone that's suffering from dementia would learn a lot from this book, that you have mm. to be patient with them mm. and that also... So there's no point arguing with them. Yeah. Like my mum said something, we'd say, oh, yeah, that's right, mum, you're right. Yeah. You know, like there's no point arguing because there's no reasoning there. Well, that's know? the other, I think, great thing about the book. I mean, obviously, Maud's a central character and, yeah. you know, offers some kind of insight. But also the impact, she's got a daughter yeah. who's, you know, a single parent with a teenage child and trying to hold down a job. So there's all mm. the kind of pressures of that and trying to care for the mum. And there's impatience creeps yeah. in, yeah. which you can fully understand. The granddaughter is back a little bit yeah. and she manages to have humour with her grandmother, yeah. which I think is a lovely thing, rather than everything being anxiety-driven. I mean, does it matter if she's got 42 tins of peaches in the cupboard? Mm. I mean, the daughter, it stretches her out because yes. she's got my mum's losing it. Yeah. The granddaughter is rules with but it But that's something more, I you know? empathised with in the book because, obviously, I was the granddaughter and yeah. my, I know my mum struggled with it from something I could completely understand because you're looking at your own mum, who you love so much and has been such a vibrant force, is so confused. Yeah. And um, Whereas I... I, I could have a laugh and a joke and all this sort of stuff because of that degree of separation. Yeah. What did you think, Nadia? Well, I, oh, I've, oh, I've got such hypochondria. I always think I'm going to get everything. So uh, I was... I, and because at the moment I've got all sorts of memory things going on, I was really dreading reading the book because I didn't want to be taken to that place. And, you know, I can't say I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really well-written book. I, 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 the writing was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but uh, it left me feeling very sad. But there was something about it, which, which you always talk about, about how do we find a way of accepting that this is part of what could happen to many of us and to our, fam and to our families. And the thing about it was, was when she was in her you know, in her mania almost, searching for these answers that she wanted, going and buying so much food, eating loads of toast, there was something and this might sound weird, almost energised, almost youthful about her in that. Now, we might... Look, and, and so it made me, gave me food for thought, because I was thinking, oh, I would just look at that and say, oh, God, is that just terrible? But actually, maybe in her own head, mm. it wasn't. Maybe it's worse for us looking in yeah. than, you know, at those is. points. Obviously, the terror and the confusion, and yeah. that obviously not. That's a terrible place to be. But it's maybe not all terrible.